Well, good afternoon and praise the Lord and welcome to Full Gospel Church International, the London branch, our online live church service, which happens this and every Sunday at half past two. And I'll say happy Easter for those who believe in Easter. <laughs> Hallelujah. And on behalf of me, Pastor Fred, Abeka, and Lady Patience, and the leadership of the church, and everybody else that is um, will join us later, we see that we will warmly welcome you to our Easter Sunday, which we call Resurrection Sunday Church Service. And as usual, we do have a little time of prayer. And then after prayer, we go to the praise, we go to worship, and then we go into the word of the living God. So the person that's on duty today to lead us through this is Sister Jennifer. So I want to see when she's ready, then I can spotlight her and she can take us through this. Sister Jenny, are thou ready? Yes, Pastor, I'm ready. <clears throat> All right, okay, fantastic. So let me spotlight you and then I'll bring up the Bible verse. Okay, so over to you, I think it's Philemon, yeah? Chapter yes. one, verse. Okay, over to Thanks. you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, and happy Easter to you all. Um, as always, every start of our services, we just like to pray in the spirit um, for a few minutes before we um, proceed. So the Bible verse that we're praying from today is taken from Philemon 1, verse 6. And our reader says, and I pray that the participation in and the sharing of the faith may produce and promote full recognition and appreciation and understanding and precise knowledge of every good thing that is ours in our identification with Christ Jesus and onto his holy. Amen. And what this verse simply means is that we may we come to appreciate, not only just appreciate, but understand and acknowledge that accurately and um, understand accurately every single thing that we now have in Christ. You know, as we've been hearing over the last few weeks, there's so much we've inherited um, after being, um, after we've come into Christ. So God not only wants us to be saved, he wants us to accurately understand this, appreciate it and acknowledge it and live in it um, as a lifestyle continuously. So with that in mind, um, with this Bible verse I've just read, may we just all mute ourselves and begin to pray. Um, for more revelation and more understanding. Christ didn't do all of this for us to stay at the same level. So let's just pray for further understanding and acknowledgement um, on this um, knowledge in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Kayande <laughs> de Rika <laughs> 
Ya Allah, 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 ya
Amen. Father, we just want to bless you, want to thank you for this time of fellowship, for this time of prayer. We know that indeed our prayers have been answered. And we have generated power for your word says that the prayer of a righteous man availed much, O oh Lord. And Father, we know that it's your desire for not only men to be saved, Father, but to also know of what you have done in in us in our salvation and what we've inherited in you, Father. So we know that as we pray this, Father, is in line with your will. So we want to thank you, Lord, that our, the eyes of understanding is being further enlightened in what you, we have gained in Christ Jesus. Because Father, we know that. You want us to know these things. You don't want us to not be aware of it because your word says that um, lack of knowledge, your people perish, Father. So may we know of this knowledge, not just on a surface level, not just theoretically, but we may we know it spiritually and may we know it confidently of every single good thing that we have gained in your inheritance, oh Lord. We thank you and we bless you that you've answered this for us, oh Lord Jesus, and we are beginning to understand what we have inherited in Christ. Amen. Father, we commit the rest of the session into your hands from the praise to the worship to the offering to the word to just even movements and the fellowships at the end, Father Lord. May it not just be in vain, Father, but may every single thing that occurs here in today's service bear fruit, O Lord. May we not just be hearers of the word, Father Lord, but may we do be doers as well. May it resonate with our spirit and may it uh, contribute to our spiritual growth. We thank you once again and we say just have your way in our midst here today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Let me know when we are ready for the praises and the worship. Hallelujah. Ready when you are. As always, we're going to, um, after our prayers, enter into a time of praise and worship. We know that it's an honor to unto God for us to just appreciate what he has done, especially on a day like this. On Resurrection Sunday for us to reflect, had it not been from, for him taking our place, where would we be? We would have been doomed, but glory be to God, he took us out of the dominion of darkness and brought us into the light, and because of that, we have eternal life. Hallelujah. If that doesn't excite you, I don't know what else possibly can. <laughs> so with that in mind, let us be ready to worship and praise God for what he has done for us. Amen. 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 Shall we be on our feet? Yeah, I'm ready when you are, Pastor. Okay, all right. The, one or two of the songs might be new, but don't worry, just follow the lyrics. But just, let us just flow. Okay, so here we go. We testify that Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. You are the God of my commander. You are the God of miracles. You gave me joy and peace to the Lord. You have come to testify. Hallelujah. 
different song yeah all the way <laughs> are you ready to go yes, yes ready we can go all day <laughs> Thank the Lord for the mercy, thank the Lord for the thing when he do. Say 
What a miracle that Jesus is alive. Well, lifting holy hands to him. There's a witness that he is. Do you know that same spirit that raised him from the dead? 
that same spirit is alive in me forever. Jesus is alive. What a miracle it is that Jesus is lifting holy holy as a weakness. We know. That same spirit that, that raised him from the dead. From the dead. That same spirit that is alive in me forever. So for he has overcome, we too have overcome. Nothing at all can hold you down. Christ has done it all. It is done. It is finished. Give it to him. Hallelujah. Christ can overcome death. He's done on our behalf. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. 
If you know he's won the victory, give him your worship this afternoon. Praise and we say, Hallelujah. 
Begin to worship the Lord, Makarebo. Indeed, He has won the victory, Makatelebo Sukaya. Let's begin to worship His name, Malalebo. In the midst of it all, he told us that he really had you on his mind the whole time. Give it to him. Bless his holy name this afternoon. He has conquered the grave. Death does not hold him down. He has risen. Our Redeemer lives and he lives inside of us. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. We were destined to be in sin forever, but for his love for us, he took on the grave and he bared down his life. What greater love is this to lay down your life so that we may be free? We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you took our place, oh Lord. We thank you that you paid the debt that we can never ever pay. You have paid it off for us. 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 Begin to worship him. Nobody can do what he has done for us. No greater love than this love that Christ has for us. That he laid down his life for us. We must have to let him be the most high. Love, Brian, and 
Father, we just want to thank you for this time of praise and worship. Lord, we just bless you. We thank you, Lord. We just want to honor you for what you have done, which is the epitome of our faith, Father Lord. This is why we come together and we fellowship and we believe the resurrection, Father Lord. This is the epitome of Christianity. And we just want to just take this day as a return to reflect and just thank your holy name, Father Lord, that you display the epitome of love true love and love like no other love that no other man can give unto us you alone father lord are deserving of our worship you alone are deserving deserving of our praise father lord there is not enough english words or enough words in my vocabulary father lord to just display my thanks father lord all we can say is thank you lord thank you lord that you took it all for us you took you took our place father lord so that we may live on and have eternal life and be freed from sin father lord we just want to bless you this afternoon father we say thank you oh lord jesus for what you have done for us oh lord we were destined to be to be in death oh lord but you had too much love for us that father you could not bear to see that happen so instead you took our place father lord and you took this all on we just want to bless you oh lord we just thank you thank you lord we worship you this is the best we can do and it's still not even enough but father with all that we have father lord we just want to say thank you lord thank you in jesus name father we commit the rest of the the um service into your hands as we enter now into a time of offering and and hearing the word that father we will be in the same worship mode we will still be in the same fellowship mode in the same um, mood of, of of thanks and worship father lord and we'll give you our very best because mm-hmm. you alone deserve it we bless you and we thank you in jesus name Amen. 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 Amen.
go ahead and do the offering straight away and then okay. I'll, go into the, I'll bring it up on the screen. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. So as you've just heard, we're going to now take our offering um, with all that we've just, you know, heard from the prayers, the inheritance we have in Christ, what we've been learning the past weeks. Um, just on this Resurrection Sunday, your heart should be full naturally, just as an honor and as a thanks to what God has done. And so, of course, back the kingdom work and to, to support God's work so that this word of God, this gospel can spread far. So with whatever you have, if you feel blessed to, um, we use our PayPal link as always to, to um, give our love gifts and our offering. Um, whatever you can do, it will be greatly appreciated. So if you've got the app or um, alternate, um, alternatively, we've got the link on the screen that you can um, put into your um, uh, put into Google, and then it should pop up. And then um, just put your bank details on there and give whatever you can do. Um, let's just pray for all the offerings that have been um, um, made in Jesus' name, Father Lord. We just want to thank you, Lord, um, that um, we are blessed, and because of well, of course we are blessed, Father. We give unto you. We give not to be blessed, but we give because we are blessed, Father our Lord. We know we have everything in you and we lack nothing. And so as an honor, as in a, a form of thanksgiving, Father Lord, we too want to give a token unto what you have done to, for us and to further back your work in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for every single one of us on this platform that, Father, we will never lack financially so that we will not stop giving, Father Lord. We pray for multiple streams of income for every single one of us. We pray that our cup we run it over that our financially will be stable or that we'll keep giving to back your kingdom so that it can go further and further we bless you and we thank you for all the um, contributions that has been made today and we pray that they will go to good use we thank you in the name of jesus amen amen and amen, amen. thank you very very much hallelujah i thought this was resurrection sunday i mean our amen needs recharge card Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Sorry. Amen. One more time. One more time. It needs a little top up. A little top up. Hallelujah! Amen. 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 No one can raise the dead. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Wow. What can I say? Wow. Wow. I wish you could just go on and on and on and on and on and on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise the name of the living God. Just trying to just connect to the Facebook first and then we would be off. Let me see what's happening here. Trying to go live. It's not allowing me to go live. Okay. Then probably there's a fault somewhere. What did you say? Oh, I do not have permission to go live stream. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's strange. Okay. That's strange. Why would they have permission? Uh, I don't Facebook. Just one second. I just need to get this sorted out. Okay. All right. Here we are. And here we are. All right. At long last. <laughs> All right, let us get into this, hallelujah. Once again, a lovely, um, resur I call it Resurrection Sunday. It's a, it's a, it's a much more um, appropriate um, word because the word Easter evokes a lot of sentiments, you know, both negative and positive. So we want to stay on the positive side, right? That would be a much more better thing to do um, than um, to sort of use the word Easter per se. I have nothing against that, but just to be on the positive side of things. So let me say a very warm and a very lovely, um, as it were, um, Resurrection um, Sunday, which is the 17th here of April 2022. And on behalf of me, Pastor Fred Abeka and you all amazing saints and lady patients Abeka and all of you once again a proper befitting well 
come to today's service. And before we go any further, let us just take a word of prayer and then we'll go into our subject of study for today, Resurrection Sunday. Father, we say that we are just overjoyed, overawed all the time at the thought of what you've done for us. We don't even have the words to express it adequately. We don't have the vocabulary to express it adequately. And I'm so glad, God, that it is you who did it. It is your love that did it. Because my love is full of selfishness. My love is not consistent. My love is not dependable. Sometimes, you no, know, we are up. Sometimes we are down. Sometimes we are excited. Sometimes we are not decided. Excited. So in your wisdom, you poured it all in Christ. And Christ lives in us. So our meeting today, I pray in the name of Jesus, that through the instrumentality of the teaching of the word, it will stir in us. It will charge us. It will invigorate us and cause our interest and our love to abound more and more in the area of accurate knowledge. I pray that, Father, by that, we shall be filled with the fruits of righteousness. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we shall be filled with the knowledge of your will. By the eyes of our understanding, being enlightened. Father, I come against specifically that mindset. It's a, like a discount mindset. It hears the word of God, but it will not agree with the word of God. It hears the word of God halfway, but it will not agree with it. Holding on to old forms of mindset. We hear the word of God in our hearts. There's a witness of the spirit that it is correct, but our minds refuses to accept it. I break down those barriers. I break down those wrong assumptions. I cast down those wrong imaginations and every thought that will try to stand up against the accurate knowledge of God. I thank you for this, Lord. I thank you for utterance. And I thank you for the light of the gospel. In Jesus' name, Amen and amen and amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. All right. Before we go on, I want to say this also that, you know, we are on Facebook Live. Hello, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Welcome, welcome, everybody that's on Facebook. Or we see this data on Facebook. The link is there. You can go to FGCI London. And once again, you know, this is the power of technology. If even we are, many are still not joined us yet, but we can extend this far off. So you do me a favor, put your finger on the link. When you go to FGCI London, drop them in your groups, whether it's your WhatsApp groups, your Facebook friends groups, you know, your school, old school mates groups, drop it there. Don't even worry about what they'll say. Somebody later will come across this that will be useful to them. For some people, they might not find any use of it. Some, but somebody, just that one word will become a significant interest and I open up to the person. So can you do me that favor and just drop it? Don't worry about what they'll say. Don't say, oh no, I don't want to ruffle feathers. I don't want to rock the boat. Jesus died for them and they have a right also to know this. For all you know, somebody cannot tell you, but they are struggling in the knowledge of God's word. And this light can open up something that has never been opened up to them. Hallelujah. So let us get into the study of the word of God. And I'm dealing specifically with something new, which I'll come back to our realities next week. But I want to deal with a brand new topic just for today, because we are remembering and commemorating what Jesus has done. So I want to deal with revisiting the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Revisiting the resurrection of Christ Jesus. We want to revisit this thing that we celebrate every year, but want to look at it in a much more closer inspection. We want to take our time and look at some stuff. 
Even if I don't finish it, it's not a problem. But I want to look at some stuff. Now, one thing that is significant is that topics like this, the resurrection, is not a topic for Easter. The resurrection is the main. The resurrection is not the minor. The resurrection is not the minor. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, which I read to the youth. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart, watch it, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is everything, folks. That means if you don't believe in the resurrection, you will not be saved. How can that be a minor? How can that be preached once in a year? How can that be sidelined, marginalized, made of an inferior topic? Never. It is the major. Even if we are tired of it, we must hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it. We should never get tired of the resurrection because that is what gave us our identity. Without it, nobody would ever make heaven. That means everybody by now would have been in Hades when they die. So revisiting the resurrection of Christ Jesus is a major and it requires always close inspection. So what are we talking about? Our identification with him in his legal victory over spiritual death and eternal death. That is why it is important to every human being. Philippians chapter 3, 10 to 11. Paul speaks. And Paul wrote this letter when he was in prison. Can you imagine? For my determined purpose is that I may know him. When Paul wrote this, it was 30 years plus in ministry. 30 years. I thought he would have shifted camp. After 30 years, what does Paul want to know? That word no is not just no as he know. He's talking about the ability to know it inside out. That my determined purpose. Folks, look at Paul's purpose. Paul's purpose was not to show up. He said, my determined, I am determined with one purpose only that I need to understand something well. Once that place of understanding is solid, all other things will fall in place. For my determined purpose is that, that I may know him, not about him, him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. He's dealing with knowledge, perceiving, and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly one and more clearly too. I am appalled and I am shocked. The believers have not got this determination of Paul. Some believers you know at some seasons, they are very, very vibrant about the things of God. You know, for three months, you see them vibrant. Then after a few months, they drop up and down. Some even, they have no interest. None. 30 years after being in ministry, and whilst the man was in jail, jail, the conditions there, they are enough to rob you of your job. But whilst the man was in jail, he wrote this, that even though I am locked, behind bars that cannot stop my determination of my one focus that i may know him and that i may in that same way to come to know look at it the power 
out flowing from his resurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the resurrection is the main fulcrum of the Christian faith. If there is no resurrection, there is no Christianity. Christianity rises and falls to the level which you understand the resurrection. That is why 1 Corinthians chapter 15 said that, why is that some say that there is no resurrection of the dead? For if Christ be not resurrected, then we are of all men miserable. Then those who have died in Christ would have perished. So the resurrection is a major. He said that I may in that same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection. What he simply means is that what did the resurrection bring to the table? Why is it so significant? He goes on, which it exerts over believers. The resurrection brought something to believers, which is that I may so share his sufferings. The sufferings here is not suffering in poverty or suffering in sickness. No, the word there is pasco. It means that there is persecution. Why? Because somebody does not want men and women to know this. He does not want men and women to know this. He is called Satan. He said, I may share in the persecution. I may share in the pressure. I don't care about that. That is part of the territory. A lot of believers, when there is pressure in life, they no longer want to come to church and learn about the things of God. So long as everything is rosy, they are fine. I may share his sufferings as to be continually transformed in spirit into his likeness, even to his death in the hope. That is, he goes on, that if possible, I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me out from the dead, even while in the body. Look at Paul's resolve. So what are we going to examine about the resurrection? Let us examine. One, what happened during the three days and three nights in hell or Hades. Now you have to understand that the English word hell was translated from four Greek words. So you have to look at it in context. The first word translated hell was the Greek word Hades. The second word translated hell is the word Tataros, which means pits or shots of darkness. Then the third word translated hell is Gina or Gehina, which was a physical place, which was the rubbish dump outside the walls of Jerusalem, used figuratively for those who not believe the gospel. The fourth word is lake of fire, but many do not understand the difference. Where Jesus went is this place called Hades. That is where he went, Hades. So I want to look at what happened during the three days and the three nights. Then also, what happened at the resurrection? When Jesus resurrected, what happened? Then also, what happened during Jesus' 40 days on earth after his resurrection? People saw him. The man was walking up and down. In fact, sometimes I wonder what was going through Pontius Pilate's mind and Herod's mind, and Israel's mind, when they saw the man whom they crucified on the cross and died, and Joseph of Arimathea collected the body and put it in a brand new tomb, and the tomb was sealed. And here is the man walking up and down the streets of Jerusalem 40 days. Then we want to examine what Satan saw on the day of Pentecost. Because the day of Pentecost was a sequel to the day of resurrection. Let's get into this. So let's take the first one. What happened during the three days and the three nights in Hades? Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 21. For our sake, 
he made Christ virtually to be sin. Who knew no sin? You got to understand the language here. He did not say to be sins. He said to be sin. It is a now to be sin. Who knew no sin? That word knew, it means relationship. Relationship. He had no relationship with it. He knew no sin. Now, he did not say sins. He said sin, which is talking about a complete noun, referring to a nature or something that was introduced that was not part of man's makeup. So for our sake, take note, our sake. He did not need it. He did not need it. But it was for our sake that he was made sin. And he never knew sin. That means Jesus was not born like the way you and I were born. We were born with a transfer and the mindset of Adam's sin nature. But Jesus was not born like that because Joseph was not the one who supplied the spermatozoa. Jesus is God who folded himself in the body of Mary. Why? Why did he do that? So that in and through him, we might become and dealt with, viewed as being in an example of the righteousness of God. So since the day you received Jesus, you have become the right way, the right nature, the right position, the right acceptance, the right constitution of the way God planned it before the world was created. So you are that example not your physical body. He's talking about what? Your spirit. He said that we may be examples of righteousness, what we ought to be approved and acceptable in right relationship by his goodness. So since the day you receive Jesus, you are in right, correct relationship by virtue of what he has done. That is one thing that came out of him going there. So he took our place. It is a full representation. Hebrews 5, 7. Watch this. We are dealing with the first point. What is the first point here? What happened during the three days and three nights in hell as we revisit the resurrection of Christ? This is a very careful theological position. Hebrews 5, 7. In the days of his flesh, he's talking about when Jesus was human, his incarnation, Jesus offered up definite special petitions for that which he not only wanted but needed. And supplications, how? With strong crying and tears. You have to ask yourself a question. When did Jesus offer strong crying and tears? I don't know where he offers strong crying and tears. He's talking about the garden of Gethsemane. He's talking about the garden of Gethsemane. Something was going on spiritually. He said, with strong crying and tears, to him was always able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence towards God, his godly fear, his piety. Why? Why did he say, if it be possible, let this cup, it was not a cup of cappuccino. Why? In that, in that moment in the Gethsemane, he, Jesus, his main concern was that he shrank from the horrors of separation from the bright presence of the Father. It has never happened before that God separates from himself. You don't understand. There is no way that almighty God will separate from himself and submit himself to what? Horrors of separation. It happened in Adam. And Adam said, I was naked. 
naked, not physically, separated from God's spirit. Separated. So this is where Jesus in the garden, the Bible says that as he prayed, he started to sweat. And when he was sweating, he even sweat drops of blood. Thick drops of blood. That means his whole spirit was trying to not reject. No, he can not reject. But his, his, his entire constitution, which had never known sin nature, had never known what it is like, never know what it means to be separated from God. His whole body was reviling and it pushed the blood capillaries. It pushed the veins. It pumped blood. Told me that the capillaries crack in his body and it came out as blood on his skin from his forehead. That shows you how repulsive sin of Adam is. God does not conjole sin. Mm -mm. God does not massage sin. Mm -mm. God does not entertain sin. Mm -mm. It is so repulsive, loathsome, that which Adam brought, which is so much repulsive that the only way to get rid of it, that he needed somebody to die. He needed, that. and that's why I said that in that he Jesus shrank from the horrors of separation from the bright presence of the Father. So the, his three days and his three nights was to take us in that place. We could not handle the separation, horrors of separation. He was separated from God. So that you and I may be accepted in God. Glory to God. The three days. Look at Acts 2, 30, 23, 24. This Jesus, Acts 2, 23 to 24. We are trying to examine slowly. We are revisiting the resurrection. The resurrection is not some fairy tale. The resurrection is key to the entire existence of man. Without that, this planet would have been done for. Acts chapter 2, 23 to 24. This Jesus, that is, this is Peter speaking on the day of Pentecost. So now all that was spoken had been fulfilled. He said, this Jesus, when delivered up according to the definite and fixed purpose and settled plan and foreknowledge of God, settled plan and foreknowledge of God, settled plan, which is the God's foreknowledge. You crucified. That means in the eyes of men, men were crucifying him. But it was a mixture of two things. God knowing that Satan would induce men to do that. So according to his foreknowledge, he allowed. And put out of the way, that means killing him, by the hands of lawless and wicked men. Verse 24. I want you to see how every time the apostles write, they constantly point to the resurrection. But God raised him up, look at the next sentence, liberating him from the pangs of death. This is spiritual death. Seeing that it was not possible for him to continue to be controlled or retained by it. A better rendering of this verse 24 will be pangs of death or is what birth throes of death, suggesting that the church was born out of the birth throes of the spirit of Jesus on that resurrection morning. Acts 2 27. Why? Why? Why not more than three days? Because there was a promise. Acts 2 27. 
because thou will not leave my soul unto or in Hades. He was promised. He was promised that. It was already spoken in the book of Psalms. Psalm number 18 said this. So he is he's borrowing that to show that it is not something that was done as something that was thought up at the last minute. It was all carefully, intentionally planned in view of Adam's transgression. So the three days and three nights is not just for fun fair. This is what Paul was saying that I need to understand this because this is pivotal. Once I understand this, this fact holds the entire Christian concept. A person's work in Christ is determined by how this concept is clear in their mind. They either rise or fall based on this. They either understand or misconstrue the scriptures based on this. It was not a partial representation. He said, because thou, he's talking about Jesus, will not leave my soul. That word is spirit, because the Old Testament people did not know the difference between soul and spirit. My soul in Hades, neither will you give, the, give thy holy one to see corruption. The word corruption means decay. So two things. You will not allow my spirit to stay in hell. But not only that, but my body also is involved. Why? The moment my body decomposes, I cannot go back into my body. Because in the conditions of those days where there was no refrigeration, after 72 hours, the body would decompose and decay. So if Jesus' body decomposes, where will be the host for his spirit when he resurrects? See that now? So that is deliberate. He said that, but thou will not leave my soul. You will not allow my spirit to stay in hell because you will not also allow my body to go through decomposition. If my body goes through decomposition, when I resurrect, where will my spirit enter? The three days and the threats. This is one of the reasons why. That it was not more than three days. It was not more than three days. So his body will not decompose. And also under the Old Testament, they needed a lamb that was without defect. A lamb without blemish. When Jesus appeared, he said, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So it was necessary. If under the shadows, they examine the goat, they examine the sheep, they examine the bull and make sure that it had no negative defects. How much more for something as eternal as eternal life will they need to, for it to have a negative defect? So therefore, it was there as a promise because thou will not leave my soul to stay in hell. Why? Because my soul needs a body as a host to be complete, to present myself as the offering of sin. Therefore, you cannot allow it to decompose. If it decomposes, then the whole plan has been called off. The why of the three days and three nights. Revisiting the resurrection. So the resurrection is not some, it is not some flimsy approach. It is well coordinated, well calculated, intentionally planned to the minutest detail. Acts 2, 29 to 36. So Peter continues his explanation of the why of the three days. 
brethren, it is permitted me to tell you confidently and with freedom concerning the patriarch David. Why is he mentioning David? Because David said this verse that God will not let him see corruption. So many people read it in the Psalms and they think it is referring to David. So Peter needed to clear up the minds of these Jews so that they know that it is not referring to physical human being or anybody like David. Brethren, it is permitted me to tell you confidently, let me tell you for a fact, with freedom concerning the patriarch David, and that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. We know where David was buried. We could see his, that his bones are there. His tomb is not empty. But, however, a prophet is called David a prophet. Now, in those days, the word prophet in the Old Testament is the word Nabi. Nabi. N-A-B-I-Y. N-A-B-I-Y. B-I-Y, for those making notes, N-A-B-I-Y, Nabi, it means the mouthpiece or the spokesman of God. Now, why do they call them Nabi or spokesman? They spoke concerning primarily the promise of Christ. Not always, but mostly. So he said, David was a prophet. So when they use the word prophet, Nabi, he's not saying a prophet like today whereby you are telling me that I'll get 10 cars, 20 cars. That's not what he's talking about. They are God's spokesman. They spoke in favor of Christ. They spoke only concerning Christ. They might prophesy once or twice about other things, but their conclusive prophetic emphasis is about Christ. But being, however, a prophet, Nabi, and knowing that God had sealed, seated, sealed to him with an oath that he will set one of his descendants on his throne. He's talking about David still. He, David, foreseeing this, spoke by foreknowledge. Look at that. Huh? Huh? Spoke by foreknowledge, what? Of the resurrection of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, again, the resurrection of Christ is not a minute subject. Can you see the emphasis? It is a major that David spoke about it, that he was not deserted in death and left in Hades, the state of departed spirits, the place of utter darkness, nor the two has been repeated again. The two has been repeated again here. nor did his body no decay or, or see destruction. Then he continues, this Jesus, God has won. Look, look at it, look at it again. They always come back to this. That's why I said, you cannot make the resurrection a one-off topic. Only preach on Easter. Then the whole year, no more message of the resurrection. You have circumvented and denigrated the very foundation of the gospel. It must be a consistent. Even if they are tired, preach it. Even if they are angry, preach it. Even if they are fed up, preach it. The resurrection is non-negotiable. It cannot be negotiated. It is, the, it is the very, very, very much the nucleus of the entire Christian work. Why? No other religion makes an advocate of anybody that rose from the dead, except Christianity, Kabbadiah. And they say there's another people that resurrected. Where? Where? Give me the historical evidence. This Jesus, look at it, God raised up. And of that, we, we his disciples are what? Witnesses being therefore lifted high by and to the right hand. Now, the word right hand, it doesn't mean a, a, a position like, you know, my left side or my right side. It is shorthand for place of authority or what we call in, in, in strong English, regency. 
office. It's an office that occupies. It's not right hand like, you know, I'm standing here and, you know, you are standing on my right hand. No, this is not a cardinal position. It is, it is shorthand for a place of function, office. He said that he died in a certain way, but when he resurrected, his role changed. He came first for one purpose, the three nights and the three days. But once that was completed, right hand, it changed. And having received from the Father, the promised blessing, which is the Holy Spirit, I want you to get that. That means the purpose of the resurrection also is to make available the Holy Spirit. Without that, there will be no Holy Spirit. Now, when he says Holy Spirit here, don't let your mind go straight to speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is the initial evidence of the indwelling. It came out of the indwelling. When he says Holy Spirit, he's talking about the Spirit of Christ. He's talking about the nature of Christ. So the word Holy Spirit sometimes can be synonymous with the nature of Christ because the Holy Spirit of God is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the nature of God. The nature of God is the constitution and the entire framework of who God is. God cannot be different from his spirit. He is a spirit. His spirit is him, and he is a spirit. So when he says that you may, you may receive the promised Holy Spirit, you receive his spirit because of the resurrection. So the resurrection is proof that the spirit can now be given. Without the resurrection, the spirit cannot be given. Why? That means there was something that blocked or impeded the spirit from being given. That is why under the Old Testament, nobody could have received the fullness of the spirit. But he took something out of the way and allowed us the plenitude of the spirit. He has made this outpouring, which you yourselves both see and hear. What did he mean by both see and hear? The Holy Spirit is not a person you can see with your eyes. So there must have been a phenomenon. There must have been something that registered on the mind of the writer of Acts that made him to conclude that this is the Holy Spirit operating. What was it? Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is not the Holy Spirit. You have to be careful about that. Speaking in tongues is the language of the indwelling of the spirit. It's the prayer language. It is evidence, but it is not the Holy Spirit. You have to get that clear. The Holy Spirit is not limited to only speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit is a person, Christ. He's full nature in you, but he expresses himself in a language that only God can understand. Can, can you understand that? He said, for David, so he explains, he said, in this thing, he's not talking about David. For David did not ascend into the heavens, yet he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, I need to qualify that. Look at the word, there are two lords. Here, yeah. let me highlight it. The first Lord, he said, the Lord, first one, here, yeah. first Lord, said, to my law, second one. We need to qualify those two. This is what is explaining the concept here. The first word, the Lord in red, is the word Adonai or Yahweh. It's talking about it's talking about God in the plan of redemption, who has not become man yet. The Lord Adonai, or the Lord Jehovah, or the Lord Yahweh, said to my Lord, the incarnate Christ. <laughs> See that now? So he's talking about he's talking about the plan of salvation, which is God before time, now taking a body who is Christ. So he's talking about there was a point of separation when he did that. See that? The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand and share my throne until 
He's quoting from he's quoting from Psalm 18. Until I make your enemies a footstool. This has been this has been this has been fulfilled in Christ. Context: Who are the enemies? Who are the enemies? Spiritual death, sin nature, eternal death. We need to get that very clear. We need to get that very, very clear. We need to get that strongly in our understanding of the word. Until I make your enemies a footstool. When he said it at that time, it had not been achieved. Then he goes on. Therefore, He has not finished. Let's get back there. Whether computer glitch or not, we are preaching the word. Verse 36. Look at the next sentence. Therefore, let the whole house of Israel recognize beyond all doubt that is why I said the resurrection is a major. If it's not clear in your mind, your entire theology of the word will be completely in tatters. How can you say he represented me completely? But you are still telling me that I can lose my salvation. That means the knowledge of this resurrection is not complete in your understanding. That's why I said, therefore, let the whole house of Israel recognize beyond how all doubt and acknowledge assuredly why that God has made him Jesus, both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucify. What does he mean by the word law? This word here, law, law is the word owner is the word master. He has made him owner and master <laughs> of resurrection. <laughs> owner and master. Yeah, yeah. Owner of spiritual death. First, somebody was trying to take ownership. Now he can, through the teaching of the word, preaching of the word, bring men out of that darkness. So in that first instance of the three days and three nights, complete substitution took place in his death and resurrection. We were completely represented, not partially represented. I don't know how a person can understand this and still feel weak, defeated, discouraged, feel inadequate, feel insignificant, if you understand that you were completely represented, he took your place. He was rejected that I will be accepted. He was separated in the horrors of that separation that you will be accepted. He was completely in darkness that you will be in light. He was in death that you will be in life. How can you be a failure? Complete substitution. The three days and three nights cannot be a wasted investment. How? Kabadaya. Now you can understand Romans 4.25. 
Look at the sentence and the expression. Look at the phraseology. Look at it. He was past tense. What did we say past tense represent in the plan of salvation? Salvation of the spirit. He was delivered up for our, our, our trespasses. That means substitution. And was raised. Kibaya. When we as Jews and Gentiles were justified. That means when Jesus entered Hades, I'm going to dramatize it for you. It might not necessarily be in the word, but it does not take it away from the word. But I will dramatize. The moment he entered, wait, what takes a man to Hades? The man must first have Adamic sin nature. One. Number two, then the man must not be able to obey all the 613 laws. So you have two things against you. That was for Jews. The Jews had two things. They had Adamic sin nature and the law of Moses against them. The, the Gentiles, all nations outside Israel, only had what? Adamic nature and conscience. So when a man dies, I'm going to dramatize it. I don't have any Bible and verse, but I just want you to understand. That means the Adamic nature will be like a magnet to Hades. The moment that person dies, because of the Adamic nature in you, like a GPS, it attracts you to Hades. When you get to Hades, I just want you to understand. So listen to me carefully. Don't hear what you didn't hear. The whole thing plays out like a, a, a court system. So there you have Satan is not in hell, but it is the conscience working. Now let's, let's assume so. They go through first, first indictment. Is Adamic sin nature in your spirit? Yes. Guilty. Bam. Now let's go to the next. Are you a Jew or Gentile? Gentile. Okay, so you, the law is not in your case. So let's go to conscience. Conscience will check. You knew you were not supposed to do this, but you did it. Yes, bam, guilty. Already the Adamic sin nature is the bigger crime. Then let's come to the Jew. Have you got Adamic sin nature? Yes, bam. But they were in paradise, but still under the region of hell. Okay, let's come to the law. Did you do any of the 613? Yes. Double guilty. Bam, you are staying here forever. You see that now? Now let's come to Jesus. <laughs> he who knew no sin, Kebodaya, was made sin for us. So he only was made sin on the cross to allow him to go to where, where sinners are. Just like if I want to go and catch fishes, I need a scuba diving equipment to get underwater. Without that, I'm not going there. So I must don the equipment. So the equipment that allowed Jesus to go into that place was called sin nature. So sin nature is like a garment, spiritual garment. It comes on you through Adam. That's what we've got the other way called garment of righteousness. They are just using the word garment just to for you to get the idea. So what Jesus? Jesus enters Hades. Then they start the indictment. So already the Adamic sin nature garment has attracted him to hell. Now then they begin to read. Number one. Law number one. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Law number two. They went through all the 613. <laughs> any, any, no. So at the end of it, they say, ah, ah, who is this guy? Who is this guy that has come to our, our environment and we couldn't get anything against him? One 613 laws. And the fact that they also checked his DNA. Did he have a DNA of Adam's sin? No. So how did he get here? 
he just took it upon himself. When all that was done, they realized that there was no charge that they could put against Jesus. Right in the pit of hell. Just as there was no charge they could put against him in front of Pontius Pilate. That's why Romans 4.25 says that. I just dramatize it for you to get an idea. For he was delivered up for our, it was our trespasses. None was his. And was raised when we, as Jews and Gentiles, were justified. So the resurrection of Jesus shows that anybody that believes in him is justified. That means nothing held against him on Adam's sin side and the laws of Moses. That is the proof. That is the proof. You can understand that there can be no substitution unless Christ actually paid the spiritual penalty of man's transgression. Now we need to answer that. Did Jesus pay Satan money? No. Did Jesus pay God? No. It is not Satan that he paid to. For what? Read the word. The wages of sin of Adam is death. So who do we owe money? Death. You didn't hear it. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. That means the only way you can pay for sin, the currency, the currency to pay your way out of sin is death, spiritual death, physical death that will lead to spiritual death. That is the only way you can settle the bill. That is why the proponents of actions don't understand. No action can pay for sin. That's why I said your righteousness are as filthy as rags. It cannot equate to the currency to pay for death, to pay for sin, which is death. Do you understand that now? The only currency that can pay for sin is spiritual death. Until spiritual death takes place, then the one that is dying, there must not also be in him any trace of sin nature. So Satan cannot do it. You cannot do it. Angels cannot do it. Only Jesus did. <laughs> See that now? That's why he said here, Romans 4.25, he was delivered up for our trespasses. I want you to see the emphasis about the resurrection raised and was raised when we as Jews and Gentiles were justified. So it was the resurrection that proved that the penalty and charge of sin nature and the sins of the law have been satisfied. That's why the resurrection is everything. Adam's sin gave Satan dominion over him. Satan breathed into Adam his own nature. <laughs> in fact, Adam was actually born again in the Garden of Eden, but backwards. <laughs> Adam, Adam was born again backwards. <laughs> he did not have God's nature. He had perfect human nature. He had perfect human life. Into his spirit, Satan now poured his own nature into Adam. Man instantly became a liar, a cringing, cowardly being, because he knew by his conscience that he had done wrong. That's why when God said, Adam, where are you? It didn't mean that God didn't know where he was. Where are you in me? I cannot, I cannot locate you in me. Where are you in me? Where are you in me? That nature had been reproduced, that nature of Satan, had been reproduced in the human ages, human race, down through the ages. Look at what Jesus told the strictest sect of the, of, the, of the Jews. You are of your father, the devil. And it is your will to practice the lust and gratify the desires which are characteristic of your father. Where did he come from? Adam, through Satan. He was, who is the he? Satan was a murderer. 
from the beginning. Kabodaya. So Jesus separated himself from any killing. He showed us who is the killer. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a falsehood, he speaks what is natural to him for he's a liar himself and the father progenitor of lies and of all that is false. That became the nature of man. The sin offering under the law had sin reckoned or counted to them. Christ did not have sin reckoned to him. He was made to be sin. The Israelites had righteousness reckoned to them. We have righteousness imparted to us. It becomes part of our nature. But Israel, they had to count it like an accounting term. This righteousness, when you understand the resurrection, enables us to stand in the Father's presence as though, listen to me carefully, as though sin had never been. This is where legalists can't understand. It means that the resurrection is useless. So in 1 Timothy 3.16, what are we doing? We are revisiting the resurrection. And we are still looking at what happened in those three days and three nights that Christ represented us completely. Represented us in the separation. Represented us in sin. Represented us in all the horrors. Completely. First Timothy 3.16. And great and important and weighty, we confess, is the hidden truth to the Old Testament folks. The mystery, the mystic secret of godliness. What is that? What is it that they could not, they could not catch under the Old Testament? He, God, was made visible. Yeah? So Jesus was not born. <laughs> Jesus was not born like you and I. He always existed. Look at that. Look at that. To show you that Jesus is God. Huh? There. Right there. He, God, was made visible in human flesh. Huh? Jesus is God. Made visible in human flesh. Kabadaya. Jesus is giving visibility to the God that we could not see in the Old Testament. Justify. That's the word again. When he became a human, what will happen next? He's not going to talk about the three days and three nights. Justified and vindicated in the Holy Spirit. Yeah? That it was three days and three nights. was seen by angels, preached among the nations, believed on in the world. Now he's talking about the ascension and taken up in glory. This is a remarkable fact, ladies and gentlemen, that Jesus was born again before he was raised from the dead. <laughs> the man got born again right in the center of Hades. Because to be born again means to be made alive. When the man, after the three days, they got nothing against him. Sin nature is not his DNA. 613 laws, he never committed any sin. What can you hold against him? So there, he got born again. He was made alive. Look at it, look at it here. Look at that word. Look at it. Look at it. Look at that's the word here. He was made visible in the human flesh, justified and vindicated in the Holy Spirit. Vindication of the Holy Spirit means you are born again. Jesus is the first person to taste born again. Kabadu Dodaya. First. That's why it's called the first begotten from the dead. First begotten. The word begotten is the Greek word prototokos. First model type. First sample. First example. 
the French use the word echantillon. When you see Jesus, you have seen exactly how the believer will be. Yeba. Look at that. I'll end with this one. I'll continue next week. We are still on the first fact on revisiting the resurrection. The three days and the three nights. This is what was going on. For them, the disciples, they thought they had lost it all. But behind the scenes, this is what was going on. Revelation 1, 17 to 18. When I saw him, who is he talking about? This is, this is Apostle John in a vision on the island of Patmos. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, do not be the afraid. I am the first and the last. What does he mean by first and the last? Some translations use the word alpha and omega. Some use Aleph and Tev. That's the Aramaic. What does it mean by first and last? First, in terms of the fact that he is the first ever original plan for salvation. And he is the last. There will be nobody ever in his category. And the ever living one, look at that. I am living in the eternity of eternities. I died. But see, I am alive. How long? How long? How long? How long? Forevermore. Why? Which means, what does it mean? So long as he's alive, what does it mean? What does it mean that he's alive? The alive is not the physical alive he's talking about. I am alive forevermore, which is, or which means, and I possess the keys of what? Death uh -huh. and Hades. This is, this is a serious matter, folks. This thing is, is, a, is a solid. That means the sin of Adam is the most serious problem. The resurrection of Christ is the most important solution. Otherwise, why is it talked about as the main in the entire Bible? Oh, you, 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 it will take you 10 years to get that. Look at that. I am alive forevermore and I possess, not going to, the keys. Keys are figurative of death, spiritual death, physical death, eternal death, Hades where men were kept, that will happen no more once they believe in me. He had conquered Satan. He has stripped him of his authority. Keys represent authority. Jesus is the master of all hell. That means when you believe in him, there is no force in hell that can take you to hell. It can never happen. That is why I don't understand how somebody can say you can be born again but you can lose your salvation. That statement in itself requires medical examination. Kibaya. How can that be? How can that be? He did not conquer Satan for himself. Jesus conquered Satan for us, for you and for me. It was as though you, you personally had met Satan and conquered him and stripped him of his authority and stood as a master over him. Now you can understand why Jesus gave us the power of attorney to use his name. He said, in my name, you shall cast out demons. You shall lay hands on the sick. You shall recover. The believer is master over Satan. Matthew 28, 8, 19. All authority after resurrection, he said this, has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye, therefore, and make students, disciples of the whole world. Students who know that they have authority that Jesus manifested in hell is our mandate today in the mighty name of Jesus. If you could only realize this fact that you have a legal right to the authority and power invested 
in Jesus' name and you can use it. You have the power of attorney to use his name. You are an absolute master. You are an absolute master. You are an absolute master of satanic forces. That makes you understand this and I close with that. Who was delivered up for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Madaya, you were a master of satanic forces. Kabadaya, Riko Sutaya, you were a master. You didn't hear me. You were a master of satanic forces. Kataya, I don't care how many of them are there. When you open your mouth and you say, In the name of, they take cover. That is why Paul said when we started that I may know him and the power of his resurrection that I may know him and know what came out of the resurrection. Once I know that there is no limit to what I can do. That is all I need to know. That's all the believer needs to know. Are you aware of what came out of resurrection? Or the resurrection is just a cliche. We just say Christ died, Christ was buried, Christ rose. He died, buried, rose. Died, buried, rose. But we are not able to articulate and apply. That should be at the foremost thoughts of our consciousness. For Paul, after 30 years, to say these facts is all I want to know and be reminded of constantly. Other things may change, but once I know this, even though I'm in jail, that's why I said that somehow I might attend to the resurrection of the dead. This power is so much powerful that anything that lock me in prison, I am coming out, Kabadaya. Lock me, hand me in, throw anything at me. You have made a big mistake. It's like putting a cork in water. It will bob up. Put the believer anywhere. You think you have seen the end of him. You have made a big mistake. Why? Resurrection power that brought Jesus from the dead dwells in his mortal body. Because of that, nothing can push him or her down. For a moment, it might look like he's gone. For a moment, it might look like he will be circumvented. For a moment, you may look like you are surrounded. But all you need to do is to remember there is fire beyond the skies. When you start and you go, Raboka Kataya Madeya, Reze Katoya, power is made available. It will shatter everything. And you come out, Kabaya. Nothing can hold the believer down because our master mastered hell and mastered death. That mastery is in your heart and on your mouth. All it takes is in the name of Jesus. If you use the name of Jesus and nothing happens, speak in tongues. Charge up until you yourself can see that power has come on your tongue. Now open your mouth and speak like the master. He spoke to the winds and the winds obeyed. He's not different from you and I. He did it to show you that he did it in the power of the spirit that is in you. That's why he asked the disciples, why did you doubt? I told you a few chapters ago. Why did you doubt? If I pray and nothing happens, I'll keep on praying. Not because now before I want something to happen, but I am allowing the power to work. Because, you know, spirits like opposition spirits they like opposition so the fact that i pray and you think that nothing happened that doesn't mean that it, does. it, it, it works all the time it's just that they are trying to throw up opposition and many believers don't know that so then they just they just throw in the towel glory to god oh let us give god praise for this resurrection ability
in Jesus name amen Praise God. Father, we say that we are grateful to you. We just say, we want to give you the praise and we will give you the glory. And Father, like Paul said, may we be conscious of your resurrection, not as a one off, not as a cliche, not as an event that passed, not as a ceremonial position, but as a reality in Christ. Jesus. That this means everything upon which the entire law and the prophets, including the gospels, including the word, hangs on. It is the very heartbeat of the message we preach so that we will take it serious and be aware that we were represented completely, not partially, in those three days and three nights and should cause us to be buoyant with joy and also be expectant of good things. For you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. You will never let go your sustaining grasp, not even for one moment, on account of Jesus. We cannot thank you enough for that. And I thank you for the life of everybody here as we, we commemorate this, that may this cause us to be aglow with the spirit, serving the Lord enthusiastically, knowing that our labor in the law will not be in vain for there is a reward awaiting us. Thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, and everybody shall say, Amen! Amen! Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, bless Amen. you. Bless you. Bless you, Sister Jennifer. Bless you. Thank you. Well, Facebook, I'm going to say bye-bye to you, Facebook. Thank you very much for joining us. Make time with us again next week at the same time with the same message on behalf of FGC London branch. We say we love you. Share this, like it, comment, and I know your life has taken a significant turn. In Jesus' name, bye for now, Facebook. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Praise God. Well, thank you very much for your time. I'm just going to go quickly because of the announcements. Just um, so Jennifer would have done the announcement, but there are some three main things that I need to talk about. So I will spare her so I can explain it because of time. Um, all our announcements remain the same, but this week we are going to, because of the um, leadership meeting that we have um, tomorrow and Tuesday, there'll be no teaching devotional because that'll be too much to do. Teaching devotional 12 to one, then come back for, you know, a four to six, you know, that, that's not fair on anybody, you know, and tomorrow also is a bank holiday. So I want to give people a chance to rest enough you know, then we'll meet on this link at 4 p.m. So let me bring up the announcements and then a few things that I also need to um, discuss regarding that. Blessed by the message. I hope you are blessed by the message. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. All right. So, so let's get into the announcements here. Yeah? Praise God. So let me bring that on the screen. All right. So here are the announcements for the week. Um, we do have an exclusive leadership seminar with the most Reverend Samuel N. Mensah, Leadership with a Vision 
tomorrow, Monday, 18th April uh, and 19th April, 2022 from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Let me bring up the flyer so that I hope I do have it. Let me just see if I can find it, if I can find it. It's disappeared, I think so. Just bear with me one sec. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. All right, I don't think I do have it. Let me see. Yeah, I got it, yeah. Okay, that's the ordination. Let's go to the next one. All right, got it. So here we are. All right, so here we are. Um, please, this is for, it's not only for us, everybody in FGC and others are going to come. Um, so please log in on time. And I'll advise you to, uh, once you, you log in, of course, then um, you meet yourself. Um, and then he's going to go, it's, it's going to be a two hour session. So I believe that there's going to be a lot in there um, in terms of leadership with the vision. And this will be for Monday and Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, UK time. Okay, so please bear that in mind. It's very, very important for that. I don't want him to come in and it's really, you know, 12, 13, 14 people. So let's let's also invite, you know, just as a, as a way of also of honor. Okay, so bear that in mind. Please, no, except for um, a serious condition, I don't want us to, you know, that we are not present, especially for we leaders, we've got to be around as a good example um, as well. Okay, very important. All right, so that is that. Then also, the next thing, of course, will be by the grace of God, and because this needs to be set, will be my ordination, which is coming off um, Saturday, the 30th of April. Now the address is going to change, so a new flyer will come with a new address. It's still within the same area. The mass where we have it will be the St. Mark's Church, which is just opposite this community hub. So our, the address is going to change. So take note. Now, this way we've got to be very careful um, in explanation. One, on the on on, on for, for on the flyer, it says three to five. Th that is for the visitors. That is for the visitors. But FGCI London or anybody connected to FGCI London in the London um, metropolis and the uh, Essex and Axis and anybody who is coming with FGCI, ours is two to seven. The reason is that we we'll need an hour to prepare the place. And then when we finish, we will have two hours, one hour to interact, take photographs, have some nibbles, and then an, an, another hour to clean up. Okay, so that is why. So the three to five is not for us. Please, please, please. The three to five is for only visitors. Visitors that will do the three to five. Because it's not be nice for them to come and then we're arranging stuff. So we've given them three to five and it gives us an hour. So you know, I know you guys uh, have got a, a, a committee. So I expect the committee to work in such a way that for us and all leaders, um, anybody who's coming, please, two o'clock sharp. We should need to be there because once you come past two o'clock, then the time to do things will be limited and will come under pressure. And one thing I want to say for, for free that our bishop does not like disorderliness. That one, he will, he doesn't care who you are, <laughs> he, will, he will put you straight. <laughs> you know, for him, his excellence is his hallmark. You know, excellence is his hallmark. So everything needs to be done, like they say, in my country correctly. Okay, very, very important that. We do, um, we do understand that. 